Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you watched our recent video from a train fair we went to, uh, you might remember that I picked up a, a rake of six Crescent Limited Riva Rossi coaches, uh, one of which you can see in the background, and uh, said I was going to run them with my Southern Riva Rossi Mikado loco, which you can see in the foreground. So I've now unboxed these coaches and I uh, thought we'd have a quick look over a couple of them. I haven't cleaned them up or anything like that, but uh, just see what you think of these. Bearing in mind, of course, these only cost me five pound each, which I think is uh, pretty good. But yeah, they're um, 12 wheelers. This would be, I presume, a baggage car. Nice steps on the side there. Reasonably heavy, not um, if you've ever had any um, of the heavyweight backman coaches, they're not as heavy as them. I'm not sure how old these would be, um, presumably from the 70s, but I don't know. They're actually made in Italy, so you can just about make that out. But yeah, this is the baggage car. The glazing is almost flush glazing. Plenty of moulding detail, doors don't open or anything like that. So that's the baggage car, of which there was one. Then we've got uh, Henry W. Grady. I've no idea who these people are or why they would have a coach named after them. But there was, a, of the six, there was three of these, all the same. Nice printing and the rivet detail is really good. There is um, there is internal seating and whatever you're in there, which you might be able to see. Then you've got the obscured windows at the end. Presumably that's a loo. I don't know. Seats again, nice door and door handles. Again, made in Italy. Should have a look at the ends, really. So they've got this uh, presumably brake wheel, but I don't actually know whether that wheels or not. And this um, safety fencing thing, so I assume you could have stood there, or maybe that's where they joined together. And the other end is the same, except there's no, uh, no brake wheel. And then we've got um, Joel Chandler Harris, whoever that might be. This again has the uh, sort of safety fencing and the wheel, the obscured glass. This end, tables and seats in this one. This is the end car, because it has the veranda on the end. Nicely done. Looks pretty cool, I've got to say. This is a different arrangement inside. And the fourth different one is the one you can see here dining car so with the obscure well partially obscured glass I'm guessing this is the kitchen end and you can see there there's uh, what looks like worktops and stuff in there and then uh, more cafe type seats and tables and yeah, this is a dining car again the ends are pretty much the same. And again, Riva Rossi made in Italy. All these came boxed, and uh, the guy took 30 pound for all six, which is pretty good. Well, I'm just gonna stick these on the track, and then we'll have a quick once over the, uh, the motive power, and go from there. So they're all connected up on the track over there, all six of them. There's a bit of a weight to pull there. They've all got metal wheels and uh, they're all relatively free running. Uh, but yeah, you can feel it when you move them. So this is today's uh, 
motive power that I particularly bought them for. This is a Riva Rossi Mikado uh, 282 engine. Um, it's sort of a typical Riva Rossi from around that time, although this was actually made twice in 1977 and 1996. I'm sorry if the uh, sun's a bit glary at the minute. Just pleased to have some really, but yeah, it's decent cold in there, not modelled really high. This isn't actually a Southern Crescent engine, which I thought it originally was, but it isn't. They did make them as well, but they were uh, 462s, I think. But it is Southern and it does match the uh, coaches. Well, the printing is really nice, there's no cab glazing. Uh, and as usual with these, the, I don't know if you can see it, the uh, motor, well, let's just make the motor out in there. He's sitting in the cab, so uh, no cab detail. And the valve gear is really nicely done. Real wire handrails, but mostly moulded. No moulded detail on these. But nice looking bell at the top. Working light on the uh, smoke box door there. Uh, the uncoupler does move and it's just uh, a sort of typical if you like Riva Rossi engine from around that time there is a bit of printing on the dome there you might be able to see with the uh, loco number 4501 the silver ash pan and a nice tender let's just have a look on the other side these Just take that tender off. These do pick up from the tender as well, as you might be able to tell. On there, and they've got this sort of crude wire thing that the uh, tender pin goes through and makes connection that way. But the, these uh, old motors are brilliant. Bomb proof. Looks like the wheels need a bit of a clean there. I haven't run this one for a good while, so yeah, not doing my job right, am I? Those wheels look a bit of a, a bit, need a bit of a scrub. And we'll just have a quick look on the other side. There's a bit of um, presumably valve spot gear there. But I think, considering it's um, mostly moulded. It's really nice and uh, proper metal handrails and the motor in the cab. Right, I'm going to get this on the track. We'll give it a run round, see how it gets on, and uh, we'll go from there. So, there is the Southern Mikado on the track. For those who want to know, this is the type of box it came in one of these long ones that are a bugger to store. I can't show you the end because that's missing and I have no paperwork. Exclude, <coughs> excuse the challenger there, pushing in. So we'll just give this a gentle start. It's got the usual river Riva Rossi noise, but that's fine. That's to be expected. I don't think that's too bad. Cross points as well. <clears throat> so let's back it up and see if we can connect up. Yeah, we've got them, and we're away. Wow, 
that's pretty effortless pulling them, I think. <clears throat> and that does look pretty good. Well, I've got to say those coaches look pretty good behind that loco. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think they were well worth the money. 30 quid for them. Now I've got another actual Southern Crescent engine I can put behind this as well. I'll uh, grab hold of that and I'll have another look at that one. There she is, my other Southern Crescent engine, which I'd forgotten about actually. Um, I have done a video on this one before. <coughs> <clears throat> because on the box it's branded as being from Matchbox. <clears throat> Those of you all remember Matchbox cars. And that's what this is branded as. I don't know what Matchbox were doing with that or anything. I haven't got a clue. This one is uh, very brightly painted. It's also immensely heavy. Um, there's not much on this that isn't made of uh, metal. Um, you can um, check out the previous video to see a bit more about this one, but um, yeah, you see it's interesting the way it picks up. It's all wired up quite nicely. Um, yeah, the whole the whole body, everything here is metal. Um, this, of course, you can see is a uh, four six two, but it does have the oops, it does have the uh, crescent logo on the cylinders there it's a bit I think I described it in the original video as being a bit garish I think we can probably agree with that it is that but it is a loco drive we'll have a look at the front it's got the bell the light an interesting gold coupling that doesn't do anything it's well made it's just garish made in China um, and the reason it's so heavy and is an excellent runner as well is probably because it's actually made by Mantua. I don't know much about Mantua. I've only got a couple of bits of rolling stock of theirs and that's all metal. But yeah, this is um, not a bad looking thing. Nice bit of sparkly coal. It's well painted. It's reasonably well detailed. I don't know how old it is, but it's definitely not made by a matchbox as in Lesney. Um, but yeah, that's how it's branded, Matchbox. So I'll get this on over with the uh, coaches and we'll see how this one gets on with it. I've not tried this yet, but I would imagine it pull them easily. So back in a moat. So there's the Matchbox uh, Southern Crescent Loco down on the track. Let's uh, just give that a very short run backwards and forwards. does run really well. Let's see if we picked up the coaches. No we haven't. Oh that would be because its NEM coupler has fallen out. Yes this Maxbox one has NEM couplings. Right I'm just gonna refit that Back in a minute. So, coupling repaired, matchbox, Crescent Limited, steamer ready to go, along with his six coaches. Let's see how it gets on. It's going to pull these, no problem. 
in your life, you guys. No problem at all. Not surprising given the weight of this engine. That's a closer look at the um, Riva Rossi Crescent Limited coaches I picked up from the recent toy fair for exactly five pounds each and my two Southern American engines to pull them. I do have another one which is a Backman Spectrum one but um, that's got the wrong couplings on and I haven't got anything to change them to. These have all got hook and loop. Um, Pretty amazing when I realised that this old Matchbox one actually has a NIM socket. Incredible. I thought that was a not newer, a newer thing than that. But anyway, so if you want to see a bit more about the uh, Mantua Stroke Matchbox Crescent Limited steamer, I'll leave a, a link to the original video in the description. Failing that, thank you for watching and seeing what we think of these coaches. If you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments. And we'll get the Challenger going again and we'll send off the Crescent. Thanks for watching.